is February 11th and I just went through something that I was given a long time ago. A friend of mine here in the neighborhood was helping, uh, I don't know, a friend or some family or somebody clear out their collections and she said that she thought of me whenever she saw the set and she brought it over. I had no clue what was in the boxes because it's been outside since like maybe November and I haven't been able to get to it because we were doing the home renovations and then the parties and then the holidays and all that stuff. And I finally took the time to get to it today. And oh my gosh, let me show you what I got. Look at this massive set of China. It is gorgeous. It is porcelain with the beautiful roses and it is Johan Haviland, Bavaria, Germany. Amazing. Look at that. We have the soup bowls. We have saucer uh, salad plates, saucers for the teacups. I'm assuming this is like a bread and butter plate or a fruit plate, or this might be a fruit bowl. It's a small bowl. And then we have the cups and the creamer and sugar. Look at that, a serving pot. And guys, it is in gorgeous condition. We have the serving bowl and platters, and then the gravy boat. Oh my gosh, like can we just, so I cannot keep this whole set. I'm actually gonna split it and share it with a friend. She's really into kind of like feminine, cottage core, kind of not shabby chic, but all of that stuff. So I'm gonna split it with her. I'm gonna keep a set of six and uh, let her take the other six. Now we did lose some, we lost two plates and two teacups, but I mean, still, this is amazing. And I am just, beyond like I couldn't believe it so yeah that was really awesome of my friend to give me so I did I did go to the gym today and so I'm all in my gym clothes and I look crazy but after or on my way home from the gym my friend called me or texted me she's like hey you got to go check out this estate sale they have a lot of cool stuff definitely all my style all the all the vintage vibes I wish we could have had the fixtures oh my goodness the fans in this place it was a super simple, like country home in the middle of, you know, nowhere where there's like spots of different small neighborhoods. And this is just on this property and like nothing crazy, right? But the light fixtures in this place were gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous. Their fans, they built in, um, they built like a sunroom as an extension of the house and it was really long and their fans were like brass textured gorgeous vintage things but at some point they took the blades off and i'm pretty sure because when they hung them in that room it was hanging too low anyway there was like four of those fans and then the light fixtures in the house were the chandelier style lights but they had the vintage colored glass globes with like floral print oh man it was just if i if we could go back and get the fixtures i'd be all about that and then they were different in all the rooms and just so detailed and beautiful like uh nothing you see now a few of the things that i got i didn't go i didn't go too crazy i did find this though at goodwill yesterday it's beautiful it's it was six dollars and it's this gorgeous etched glass floral top lampshade and then i found a full set of the stainless and black canister sets for eight dollars guys a four piece for eight dollars that was awesome i also found some gorgeous placemats at this estate sale they're here they're roses how funny look let me show you so look they're rose prints as well beautiful beautiful placemats and how funny, because now I have this whole set of dishes that are also roses. And then I found some other goodies. Got a Wedgwood style tin. I have some of these 
heavy pewter book ends copper candle holder i'll probably keep that just found some really cool vintage tins this one is a delft blue and mill found some silver plated royal blue or cobalt blue glass lined salt and pepper shakers brand new in the box so many goodies so many goodies um this i have never seen this and if you don't know corningware has this print of dishes and they resell very well i resold a creamer i resold something else but you don't find them often and they're super high price but to find a candle with the print i felt like was an amazing rare find so i did pick that up and then i found this or the hubby found this cool antique looking candle and i'm keeping that it's just too cute to let it go so that's gonna stay here at the house anyway lots of goodies and i feel like they're so good that i should do a haul i might do a haul pretty soon because this is a lot of good stuff yeah <laughs> Anyway, we are going to load up two of the boys left with their friends and two are still here at the house. So we're going to load up and we're going to go have an early dinner because it'll be half the price. <laughs> I'll check back with you guys in a bit. Bye. Even in the midst of the crazy, out here getting together with friends is different. We were invited to our friend's house for Super Bowl and we had to go. It's so much fun getting together with everybody and just kind of relaxing in the middle of all of the hectic stuff that we have going on. And we don't have to go far from home. The kids can jump in a golf cart. We jumped on the Polaris and we all headed over to our friend's house for Super Bowl. It's crazy seeing these boys be so grown. At this time, it was tax time. If you don't know, if you decide to have an eBay store, a vintage resale business, there's taxes involved. You have to keep track of everything, document everything, and I'm old school. I like to see all of the receipts. I like to have everything organized and in order. I make sure to calculate all of my totals. I print out all the information necessary because I am not about to be audited. <laughs> and if I am, everything is there, like let's get this over with. But that being said, an eBay store is a business and it requires a lot of dedication and doing things you don't wanna do. If you don't know, my store is the Bates House Shop. It's full of vintage goodies and I try to keep up with it and keep it stocked. I go through periods of being super busy in life where I don't list much as far as new stuff. And then whenever I can hit it hard, I will fill it up with all the new things. I keep all of my unlisted inventory in baskets at the bottom of my shelves. But I have to say I love the process. I love the sourcing. I love refurbishing all of the cool finds. I love finding things for myself in the process and giving all of these goodies a new life and pairing it with their new home and its new space to let them continue on from back when. Hey guys, good afternoon. It is 
February 19th, I believe. And a lot's been going on here. I have been a little MIA because I've been working on my taxes for 2022. And that just requires a lot of, you know, OCD color coordinating, highlighting, pretty numbers and all the things. So that takes a little time getting all my receipts together. It wasn't actually as bad as I thought it would be because I consolidated everything down. I kind of quit listing on Etsy and just have that for personal DIY projects like my junk journals and stuff in which I actually think I might just shut it down altogether and just sell my junk journals on eBay in my shop. And uh, anyway, long story short, there's stuff going on. So the hubby and the boys were actually working on the greenhouse. Check this out. It is 32 feet long. That's the hubby walking over there. He's coming from the neighbor's house. 32 feet long, guys. Check this out. How gorgeous. And uh, the inside, basically the exterior walls and the inside frame are all going to be garden beds. So the exterior walls go like that all the way down on both sides. And then he's going to build a back, of course, but there will be uh, tree stumps that will be our exterior wall going all the way down. Um, I think he's gonna leave some room available for storage. Uh, that might be along the backside, not really sure at this point yet. And he has to build a front with the wall. But all of those tree stumps that you see there were actually from our property here and they are going to be the inside raised bed wall. So that's gonna be pretty freaking awesome. So we have a lot of issues with critters and birds and animals and our own personal animals, our chickens, when they make it pretty far out, they will jump into our garden and kind of cause some problems. And then we can't let the goats out and stuff because they'll get in there too. And so, yeah, we just want to avoid all of that. And we are starting with this garden here. And it's pretty freaking awesome, especially because we're in the days of constant uh, toxic fires and train derailments and leaching of all the things and acid rain. So like we can't even trust the rain at this point. All of that being said, we do not live on city water out here. We actually have well water. So that's a huge plus. This way our plants will stay nice and hydrated and covered and protected from all of the freaking things as well as we can do it, right? So yeah, here's the previous bed. It's been resting through the winter. The hubby put hay on it and he puts uh, the manure and stuff on it. He's got some seedlings going and we're gonna be making some progress in garden stuff. Also, he got rock poured. It's like a combination rock and concrete dust thing where it kind of hardens as it sits and gets wet in the rain. That way it won't sink and we can drive over it without getting stuck in the mud because when it gets wet out here, it's like really wet and we don't get stuck, but people that come through here do, and then they kind of tear up the yard, and any yard work that we have to do gets tore up, and so this way, it's all nice and set. He has it going from one side of the property. We have a driveway all the way around the Bates House workshop, all the way to the outside of the street. Hi, babies. Hi, babies. Hi, babies. Hi, babies. Hi. Hi, babies. Hi, you're so aggressive. Hi. Hi, Mama. Hi, Mama. Come here. Yeah, hi, Sadie. Hi. Hi, all of the babies. Uh, Hi, Sadie. Yeah, let me lick my nose and then lick your finger. That's great. <laughs> Sadie, you're beautiful. You're a pretty girl. She is getting big.
You're getting big. I'm done with my taxes. Uh, I know. I totally forgot there's no Etsy. There's no uh, uh, PayPal in, uh, information because we don't use PayPal through eBay anymore. So that was like a whole other stack of stuff I didn't have to do. That's good. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I saw you pulled out the poles. Oh, that, yeah. I scraped the top of it off and put it in the big hole. Ah. I just found a big old hole, and then this, the top of this was always too high. Yeah. So when you ran across the top, the mower goes all the way to the dirt every time. Uh, so now when the grass grows here, we won't, we won't be there like that again. Yeah. I saw you took out the poles. Yep. I thought you wanted that. Nope. Change your mind? Okay. If I do anything out here, I'm not doing hangout areas. We have a fire pit and a bar area. That's true. And I don't want to put more hangout areas and not use them. What are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? She's always been the one that always them fluffy come. cheeks. She's always come to me and everything. Hey, that ball had ants on it. Crazy ducks. Got the ducks over there. Ducks, chickens, goats. Oh, peacock. <laughs> Sound like a cat. Yeah, it's a peacock. <laughs> Got little stragglers. Yeah, you're repurposing it, isn't it? That looks cool. Alright, that's what I thought. I went in there to go find a window. The window we have is a one piece that doesn't open. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I was like, oh, that's horrible. That's yeah. what I needed. I wanted it to open. That's good for, like, the door. So you can have a glass door. Yeah, I'm just going to make a regular door because it's going to be open and closed and slamming. It doesn't matter. That's what they're for.
Hey guys, good morning. So it is February 20th, 20th, something like that. Anyway, it's chore day. The kiddos are doing all the chores. I am, I've already made my list for the day of all the things that I need to do. It includes pressure canning, water bath canning, uh, filtering some tinctures, making a, an oregano oil, lots of things. I got a blueberry pie I gotta make because uh, I have some, where are they? I have blueberries here and I made a blueberry oatmeal pie the other day. Oh my God, I never thought to put oatmeal in my pie and it was delicious. So that's what I'm gonna make today. The kiddos said they want blueberry pie. Hey guys, so it's the evening now. Hubby's home and we're actually, he's actually doing something fun. <laughs> so let me show you what he's got going on. <laughs> <laughs> Eating the one plant right there. <laughs> right, the one plant that they've. Hey, get, get them! <laughs> little monsters. Bad little kids. Yeah, right. Run, run, run! <laughs> oh, little babies. Hey, Bugs, can you turn the water on? No. Oh. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Who do you know about that? <laughs> All right, so here's what we got going on. Maybe the hubby can explain it better for you. Yes, I probably can. <laughs> so, trying to get better, higher protein feed for our chickens. So, I got a list together. Sadie, after, excuse us. I got a little list together after doing a little research of what will give the chickens a better protein value and still be friendly on on the on the price and whatnot so hold on i'm gonna go widescreen <laughs> i think they like it i think they think it's a game i think they do it's like they're gonna come back out and they do it again water bucket over. yeah but, okay <laughs> well they're in another plant now they're psychos they're having, they're going crazy. Yeah. All right, so, ready? Yeah. So after the research, I come to find what the best thing is gonna be, what the best product products for me or the best type of grains and everything, uh, combination, there we go. Okay. For us is gonna be, we got barley, I've got whole oats, I've got crimped corn, I've got uh, black oil sunflower seeds and whole wheat That's all mixed in here try it if you want to it's all mixed in i used two wheelbarrows because it was one two three four five 50 pound bags okay so this is 250 pounds of feed and it costs me maybe around a hundred bucks so I just poured each bag in here one at a time mixed them together as I went and it's really easy to mix it's really really light so he was telling me because of course y'all know I'm all about purchase price so I was asking if it makes it better money wise to buy it and he said not necessarily you're kind of breaking even but at the same time you're getting a higher quality product yes Correct. and right now with everybody's egg situation and you know the outside world doing things with food we decided to go to a mill and just get cleaner product yeah. basically Pretty much. and then with the barley also with the barley that i bought because this is barley right here i put some inside of this uh, little tub here because I'm just going to get this wet and I'm going to water it and I'm going to see if it sprouts and if it sprouts and it grows like little barley sprouts in there or little green types of sprouts in there, then that'll be a good source of uh, food as well for the uh, chickens, the fresh food. The chickens. We and do let the them. Fresh food and then, and then I can keep this going because yeah. there's so much in there. We and do let like them, uh, we let them free range out here but they don't make it too far because we don't let them come out the whole day otherwise the they'll be all up in the garden under the house and uh, getting into everything so we don't let them all day 
but uh and the other thing that i'm gonna do is uh have i'm gonna get a five gallon bucket i just gotta go find one I'm sure there's one right over there for me i'm gonna put a scoop maybe two scoops of this here in the bucket fill it up with water let it sit for three to four days it'll ferment you'll start to see the bubbling action of oh the, the fermented of the, barley the fermented yeah. barley correct i'll let that ferment and that'll boost the nutrient value of it and um and at the same time it actually swells whenever it's wet as well so it'll actually fill them be more filling yeah so, so that'll be something that I give maybe like every other day or something like that. Or or I may or I might just get a couple buckets and I'll have a couple of them going. Yeah, cycling. And then when I use one up, then I start another one. It'll just be like a, a cycle that I keep going. Yeah. Sounds good, Daddy. Push it up. So these girls are definitely spoiled. And then we have uh, we actually have 75 <laughs> meat birds coming. Hi, pretty girl. Hi, hi, baby. Um, we have 75 meat birds coming. The hubby's gonna build them a chicken tractor because they will be moved from space to space in the front yard because we have nothing in the front yard. It's just little hills and grass. Yep, and so that cool. way, Yes, it's going to be the perfect spot. It's all fresh ground. Nothing's happened with it or we don't use it for anything. It's just green. So that way we can put them in the chicken tractor, move them daily. And they have plenty of room up there to source their fresh greens from. And I'm not going to lie to everybody. I have three bags, 50 pound bags of layer pellets. <laughs> mix that in too. And this is going to be even more. Yeah. Yeah. Look at them. They they think something's happening here with food for them. I think they're done waiting, actually. I don't even feed them right now. They're just being nosy. Being crazy. Baby, what y'all doing? Hey, she's eating the barley. Hey. Ma'am. Diesel, get her. Go get her, Diesel. Go get her. Tell her no, no. Go tell her no, no. Tell her no. Actually, don't, don't take that yet. I might end up needing that to hold some of this mixture. Yeah, Hardcore. If y'all don't know, Boogie, for some reason, likes to taste everything. <laughs> I taste it once. We have onion grass out here, and he eats the onion. Did bulbs, it. dandelions. Oh. He tastes everything. He's our taste tester. <laughs> Mix it in, Boney. Mix it in. These are our oyster shells. I finally found somebody in our area. Are you recording? Yeah. Finally found somebody in our area that, uh, that'll get them for me. So I took advantage, full advantage of that and ordered me a 50 pound bag and it was, was it $17? I think it was something like that, yeah. That's how much it costs for a five pound bag. Yeah, and online or, tractor supply. yeah. So if anything, I'll save my money on just buying that. Yeah, true. And we do put their shells and we do put their eggshells back in there every now and again. You might want to take some of that out, baby. It's getting full. Yeah. That's all I was thinking. All right, I'm gonna grab these eggs. See what there is. Y'all are horrible. Get in there.
she still have it on her head or you cleaned her off? Yeah, cleaned her off. <laughs> Sadie, what were you doing? What did you do? The bucket was upside down. I'm kind of scared she'll headbutt me because she's going to look at me. She won't headbutt you. Just pet her. Yeah. She just wants to be able to eat. Yeah. Give me that bucket. The red one? Yeah. Um, okay. Here we go. Right here. Down here. Don't step all in the mud. That's not mud. She's not going to do nothing to you. He knocked it off her head. Yeah, he cleaned it off. Say the girl. You like alfalfa? <laughs> she like, I dress in it, so yeah. She look like alfalfa with her hair. <laughs> <laughs>